Last week we talked about planning and preparation, about our route, how we got our bikes ready to go, and how we got ourselves ready to go. Hey! And so, as ready as we could be, we got ourselves and our bags onto a ferry, then to a car. We got to the airport, went through security, checked our bags all the way through to Edinburgh, which is going to come into play later. Then we hung out at an airport lounge, got on a plane for oh, 14 hours, I guess, landed in Dublin, got on a smaller plane, and that plane took us about an hour, hour and a half, to lovely Edinburgh. I just wish that our bags could have been there to see it, but no, they were still in Dublin. But as Carol and I found that they say a lot in Scotland, it'll all be sorted. And so, unencumbered by luggage, we caught the commuter train down to Princess Street in Edinburgh. There we went to our apartment that we were sharing with Jeff. And here's our lovely room in Edinburgh. If I sound jealous, I was. And Jeff has a bicycle. Although Jeff was smart, he rented there. And Jeff has a laptop. And Jeff has a change of clothes and all kinds of goodies. The Airbnb was really great. It was downtown. We had a lovely view. We had a great bed and we had a shower and we had laundry so we could get cleaned up enough that we could go out to dinner that night. We even had haggis croquettes. Interesting. The next day we had planned to sightsee and since the weather was beautiful, that's what we did. Where we were staying was downtown on Prince Street. It was a vibrant area right across from the castle. So we walked on up Castle Hill. Although it was all spectacular and old world charm, the most incredible thing I saw was a lawn cutting Roomba. Go, grass Roomba, go! It being high season, by the time we got up to the castle, the line was crazy. So we said, meh. Let's just go hang out, eat some lunch, and check our phones, and check our phones, and check our phones. But our phones said that our bags and our bikes weren't moving, and that kind of blows. <coughs> On one of the many long calls that Carol made that day with Aer Lingus, she eventually got escalated to a vice president, and the vice president could make things happen. By the end of the day, we had our luggage. We had our toiletries, we had our clothes, we could get cleaned up, we could go out to dinner. Of course, our bikes were still in Dublin, and we had to be out of the Airbnb by noon. But about 10 a.m. the next morning, Glorioski, they showed up at the Edinburgh airport. Jeff and I jumped on the train, went down to the airport, and grabbed the bikes and brought them back. By this point, it was almost noon, so we got out of the Airbnb, and Carol and I called an Uber that could handle us and our luggage. We took that down to a storage unit that we had arranged before, and we assembled the bikes there and locked our now empty luggage in the storage unit. Then Carol and I took a series of confusing trails up the hill and back to Jeff. Then we all put our panniers on our bikes and rode over to Edinburgh Waverley Station to catch the next train to Perth. We were able to find a very nice young man who not only showed us the train, but actually walked with us onto the train and showed us where we could put our bikes. Although it was not the way we had planned to travel from Edinburgh to Perth, it was still going to meet our timeline. And besides, it was kind of raining outside. It was late afternoon by the time we finally got to the Perth train station. It took us a while to get out of the station and a while to get out of town, but eventually we got on some trails. But the trails included some tough spots, like stairs, not necessarily made for touring bikes. This was our first sign that some of the trails may not be perfect for encumbered riders like us. Next week we finally start really cycling in Scotland. I'll see you then.